Welcome to the Blind Android Users channel. This is your source for everything Android tutorials and demos, all from a blindness perspective. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 86 of the Blind Android Users podcast. Today is Saturday, July the 30th, 2022, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Fee Dan from London and Austin Pinto. Coming up today, we have the announcements. Austin will bring us those announcements. Then we have the Android basic segment, and we continue in the system settings. And today we're talking about privacy and all of that good stuff. Following that, we have app of the week. Then we close the episode with the highlights from TalkBack. Let's go around the room now and talk about wellness. Fee, are you still burning in London or no, you guys? <laughs> no, cool it's down. cooled down, thankfully. It's still nice though. I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt. It's a nice day, but it's not no, we're not being boiled alive anymore, which is a quite a relief, actually. Um yes, that's that's definitely a good thing. And uh I thought about everyone here on this podcast and all the fellow Android users on Thursday because I I went somewhere new and I used Lazarillo for the first time in a while and uh, that was very helpful so um, yeah it's it's been an okay week busy as usual with lots of things I did a sermon on the Lord's Prayer last week including mentioning bread I was like a good food reference and um, yeah it's been good things are definitely easier that heat was something else and i'm glad it's cooled something down something else well i'm glad you actually were able to use your lazarillo out there that's a great app yeah. i like it and i was thinking is this the way to lazarillo <laughs> do, 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 do. exactly uh austin are you cooling down i know you have some guests uh this week so that sounds like you guys are having some party out there yeah, we are having some guests and the party is still on, but I'm on the recording. Unfortunately, the heat wave has traveled from UK to Mumbai, although it's not very melting hot, but it's slowly getting there. The rain has stopped. That is the most unfortunate news. So we are being cooked a little bit, slowly, slowly. Well, somehow we got the heat. Um, the heat has been turned on here. And so the Northwest has been on fire. I mean, literally in the sense that it's just been awfully hot. So we're averaging. I've been keep, keeping a log of the weather. And, you know, starting Monday, uh, Monday we were 99 degrees. And then uh, the last few days, it's been like 102, 103 so it's been just awful. So the good thing is that the uh, humidity, you know, ranges between 12% uh, percent to about 17%. And that's what we have going on here. We now turn our attention to the announcement segment. And Austin, what do we have in store? This week, we have two announcements. The first announcement is listeners would be pleased to know that we are now, along with YouTube and our website and other podcasting platforms, we are on Rumble. So you can listen to our podcast on Rumble and uh, enjoy the show. I'm having far too much fun with that. So if you have seen that our website is back live again, if you enjoy the podcast, our website also has a tip jar. So you please contribute whenever possible. Nothing is a small amount. So you can donate whatever you feel like, whenever you feel like. And it will make sure that we go on. This costs a lot of money. And hosting the website and all that is very expensive, so all donations will be appreciated. We now turn our attention to the Android Basic segment, and this week, as I indicated, we'll be talking about privacy, permissions, 
data access, and all of that. For an introductory part, I would like to show you the overview of that. And after my introductory part of showing you this part of the item in the privacy and all of that, then we'll have Fee show us a little bit of the same thing that is found and contrast that to what is on the Samsung phone as to the one I'd be demonstrating on my Pixel phone. So now here, I'm going to show you that general overview of the area, and then Fee will show us what is contained on a Samsung phone. Here is that overview. As I have indicated, today we'll be talking about this area found within our system settings, and that has to do with privacy, permissions, account activity, personal data. Let us now go into this section and take a survey of the area. For today, though, we'll be taking a look at a couple items in here. So here are the items that we find here. Privacy. Navigate up. Button. Out of list. Tapping on that, these are the items that we find in here. Accessibility usage. Two apps have full access to your device in list. The first item we come across here, and by the way, this is using my Pixel 4 and running Android 12. The first thing we come across here, of course, is accessibility usage. And I am told that a couple items have full access of my device. And this would be, of course, TalkBack. And I believe the second one is BrailleBack. We'll be looking at this when it comes time to look at this, because this is one of the two items that we'll be looking at today. The next item. Privacy dashboard. Show which apps recently used permissions. Privacy dashboard. And that's the one we'll also be talking about today and making the two. And so the two items that we'll be talking about today will be the accessibility usage and the dashboard. Next item. Permission manager. Control app access to your data. Permission manager. And this one controls what apps have access to my data. Next. Camera access. For apps and services, switch on. The camera access is switched on for apps that may need it and things like that. And below that, microphone access for apps and services. If this setting is off, microphone data may still be shared when you call an emergency number. Switch on. So the microphone access is switched on. And even if I turn this off according to what it says, I should still be able to access it during an emergency call. Next. Show passwords. Display characters briefly as you type. Switch on. And here we encounter something about passwords. Because remember, we could enable this also within the talkback settings. And so here again, we find this item again and saying we can be shown uh, the characters as we type, you know, for a brief moment. And turning this off, of course, we're not going to be able to hear what's going on and have that confirmation after we typed in a character. Next. Notifications on lock screen. Don't show notifications at all. And this has to do with notifications. And as you can see, mine is turned off because I prefer my notifications not to be showing on the lock screen. Next. Android system intelligence. Get suggestions based on the people, apps, and content you interact with. So this has to do with the sharing, most especially you want to share an app. And when you tap on that share, then it is uh, populated by some of the apps or contacts that you can share it to. This has to do with the Android intelligence. Next. Personalize using app data. Allow apps to send content to the Android system. Switch on. Next. Show clipboard access. Show a message when apps access text, images, or other content you've copied. Switch on. So in other words, when I copy text, I should be told that so-and-so app has copied text to the clipboard. Next. Autofill service from Google. Saved passwords, credit cards, addresses. And this is a very important feature because I like autofill because if I'm filling out forms on the internet or whatever, and instances where my address is needed and things like that, those things can be automatically filled out for me and also credit cards and things like that. Next. Google location history saves where you go with your device. 
The Google location history in here, one could go in and check to see whether uh, their history should be kept or not. Let's keep going. Activity controls. Choose the activities and info you allow Google to save. And next. Ads. Advertising ID and personalization. And this is how you control how ads are targeted at you and things like that. Next. Usage and diagnostics. Share data to help improve Android. And that's the last item in this section. As I indicated, today we'll be talking about the first two items up there. And in the subsequent weeks to come, we'll be visiting these other items. Let us now turn our attention to what we have at hand for today. That is what it is like on a Pixel phone. And now I'll have Fi help us show us what it is like on a Samsung phone. And then we'll discuss the two items that I mentioned, and that will be accessibility usage and the privacy dashboard. Uh, Fi, do you want to show us what the uh, area is in Samsung, what the items are and comparing it to, you know, what we have on the Pixel so we yep. see what that is? Privacy. Right. I'm in the privacy settings. Privacy. Search settings. Permissions used in last 24 hours. Heading. Camera. Zero apps. One of three. Microphone. One app. Two of three. Location. Two apps. Three of three. All permissions. Out of list. Permission manager. Accessibility special access. Two apps have full access to your phone. So that's the one we're going to be talking about. And I believe in my case, it's TalkBack and BrailleBack. Although I've recently updated my phone, so it may be that I don't need BrailleBack anymore. Controls and alerts, heading. Camera access, allow apps to use the camera if they have the appropriate permissions, on. Microphone access, allow apps to use the microphone if they have the appropriate permissions, on. Switch. Alert when clipboard accessed, get an alert when an app accesses text, images, or other content you've copied, on. Samsung. Heading 12 of 23. So this is the bit Warren doesn't have. Samsung privacy, 13 of 23. I went into this earlier to see what was inside and it took me to a website and quite honestly, it was too annoying. So I just backed out of it. Customization service, 14 of 23. Uh, that's very similar to the Google uh, personalization type options. Send diagnostic data off switch, 15 of 23. Uh, looking through this made me realise that I was sending Samsung diagnostic data and actually I didn't want to be doing that, so I've switched it off now. Google, heading 16 of 23. So now we get to things that I think Warren would have had. Android personalisation service, 17 of 23. On Android personalisation service, switch. Android system intelligence, 18 of 23. Autofill service from Google, 19 of 23. Google location history, 20 of 23. Activity controls, 21 of 23. Ads, 22 of 23. Usage and diagnostics, 23 of 23. Showing items 11 to 23 of 23. I'm Set very... Account legal terms updated. Navigate up. Yeah, shush now. I am very sad to say that I don't have a dashboard, which means I can't drive. So um, perhaps while Warren is demonstrating this, I will have a sudden aha moment and go, oh, in a Samsung phone, they put that in this place instead. So we'll have to see. So if you're using a Samsung phone and you can't find a dashboard, uh, you are not going mad. It's not there. Now, I'm glad that we have the two to compare because in here you see there's a heading for Samsung and then there's a heading for Google. And so there are googly things and then things that are only uh, relating to Samsung. So for example, you got diagnostics from Google and also diagnostics from Samsung. So it's a very important thing uh, to compare this to. And I'm glad we have this. Thank you so much, Fee. Uh, Austin, let's now turn to the first two items and so we want to go into accessibility usage, what that entails. And in other words, in here, we'll see what apps have access to accessibility usage. And so we'll go in here and see what Austin has on his phone. Full access 
So I'm the privacy settings. Accessibility usage. One app has full access to your device. And the one app that has usage has to my device. Full access to your device. It says Last talk access. back. 10 16 p.m. has full access to my device. Talkback can view your screen, actions, and inputs, perform actions, and control the display. Settings, button, permission controller, accessibility, navigate up, downloaded apps, speak, off. So it opened the accessibility settings. Screen reader. And I can Talkback select on Talkback speak items here on screen. and manage the settings of Talkback from this uh, page. So it opens the accessibility window. Back. Privacy, accessibility usage. So in other words, as you can see, actually, so when Austin tapped on that accessibility usage and then you tapped on the settings, which supposedly is supposed to be for TalkBack, but what that does is that actually it takes us to the accessibility uh, segment on the phone. So in other words, this will, uh, if you want to add something to have access to this accessibility usage, it takes you to that place where you could enable such an app that will need access to accessibility. So it's a nice feature. So if you didn't want to go through uh, system settings and go to accessibility, and you'd rather go through here, that's another way that you could get access to the accessibility settings on your phone. Thank you so much, Austin. Let's see the next item uh, that we'll be talking about, and that will be the dashboard. Privacy dashboard, show which apps recently use permissions. So as you can hear, this is the privacy dashboard and it shows you which apps have recently used permissions. Let me go inside of this dashboard. Privacy dashboard, back, button, refresh, more options, button, past, location, used by three apps. So three apps have my location permission. Camera, not used in past 24 hours, disabled. Is not used. Microphone, used by four apps. Four apps have my microphone permission. See other permissions, body sensor, so calendar, and 10 more. These, have, these are the list of 10 permissions that are there. Let me just click on one of the permission. Microphone, microphone usage, back, more option. Timeline of when apps used your microphone in the past 24 hours. So this gives us a timeline of when the apps have used microphone. Today, at 8.42 p.m., Telegram beta. So Telegram used microphone because I was sending a voice chat to someone. 8.30 p.m., WhatsApp, two minutes. And WhatsApp used it for two minutes. 7.17 p.m., WhatsApp. And again, at 7.17 p.m., WhatsApp used the microphone. So in this way, you can go inside each permission and check which app has used which permission at what time. I really like that feature because then one is able to know uh, what app has access and then for how long that access was for. So it's a really neat feature when you think of it. And also, I think there was one for the camera, wasn't it? Uh, you want to show us back out of here, Austin, and show us, I think the first one above that was the uh, camera or there was none using the camera. If not, then we'll go to the one that has like location and then we'll go to the one with the calendar and all of that. It seems like we have 10 items in there and we'll dive in here and see the items that have those permissions. So not a single app has used my camera. And uh, location used by three apps. Location is there. So let me go again into this location. Location usage. Back. More option. Timeline of when apps used your location in the past 24 hours. So it's the same thing. Today. Heading. 8.27 p.m. GPay. Google Pay use the location. 8.26 p.m. Phone. Two minutes. Phone used it. 8.21 p.m. Phone. And again, phone used it. 8.02 p.m. Google. Google Assistant used the 7.35 p.m. Phone. Two minutes. 6.43 p.m. So you can get the timeline of all the apps 
that Back use the button, location permission. Navigation bar. Privacy data. Camera, not microphone, used by four app. See other permissions, Let me go body sensors, calendar, and 10 more. Into these 10 more permissions. Body sensors, not used in past 24 hours, disabled. Calendar, used by three apps. So calendar is used by three apps. Let me just check them. Calendar, more options. Calendar, apps with this permission can access your calendar. Heading, allowed, heading, Android Auto. Calendar, accessed in past 24 hours. Galaxy Watch 4 Manager, accessed in past 24 hours. Galaxy Wearable. Gmail. Google, accessed in past 24 hours. Not allowed, heading. So these are the list of allowed and not allowed apps. Airtel. Clock. And these Facebook. list of not allowed apps will have all the apps that you have installed that can access your calendar, but you have not allowed Back. it. Button, window or it is bar. not requested for the permission. Privacy Let dashboard. Me go back. Calendar. Call logs used by three apps. Again, three apps have used call logs. Let me call check. Call logs. Back. More options. Call logs. Apps with this permission can read and write phone call log. Heading. Allowed. Heading. Android Auto. Galaxy Watch 4 Manager. Accessed in past 24 hours. Galaxy Wearable. Google, accessed in past 24 hours. Phone, accessed in past 24 hours. Not allowed, heading. So again, the same allowed and not allowed list is Back. there. Privacy dashboard, call logs, use contacts, used by six apps. Six apps have access to my contacts. So if you want ah, to... Ah, you want to check that, Austin? Yeah, who you has your... really check that. <laughs> Who has your mula, man? Yeah. So you can deny access to any app that you don't Contacts. want. Back. More options. Let Contacts. me just show you. App allowed. Heading. Android Auto. Android Auto has access. Calendar. Calendar has access. Contacts. Accessed in past 24 hours. Contacts should definitely have access to contacts. Galaxy Watch 4 Manager. Galaxy Wearable. Gmail. Gmail should have access to your contacts. Google, accessed in past 24 hours. Uh, G Google, this is the assistant. If you want, you can block, but if you block, then it will not be able to call anyone that you say. Gpay. Gpay should have access to contacts because you can pay people with uh, Gpay. Messages accessed in past 24 hours. Messages should definitely have access. Personal safety. Phone accessed in past 24 phone hours. should have access. Settings. Telegram beta accessed in past 24 hours. WhatsApp accessed in past 24 hours. So Telegram and WhatsApp are the only two third-party apps that may or may not be given access, but I have given them. Not allowed. Heading. Back. Privacy dashboard. Contacts. So here, these are items that are important, like Austin has mentioned. So if I don't have it having access to my contacts, for example, let's say Gmail, if I want to send someone an email, that autofill of the address is not going to be there because it doesn't have access to it. The same thing is true when you're composing, uh, say, using the Google Assistant and you're asking it to do something, calling someone, calling a friend or whatever, it's going to tell you, I don't have access or something to that nature. So if you think that these are things you need to use and have easy access, then it makes sense to have uh, those things having access to your contacts. Uh, Austin, let's see some of the more items that we have in this area. Files not used in so past 24 files hours. Files are not used. Music and audio used by two apps. Two apps are using my music and audio. I don't know which ones are they. I must check this music out. Music and audio. Back. More options. Music and audio. Apps with the allowed. Heading. Arogya Sedu. So Arogya Setu is one of the app. This is a 
government app that uh, is uh, for covid vaccinations and all but i don't know why it requires music and audio permissions i'm going to deny this app that permission <laughs> amazing the, gov- yeah. the, the government is trying to listen on you bro just kidding well, yeah uh, <laughs> well this is interesting though i wonder what the app does you know now that uh it has access to music i think what it means though it uh, probably well it's not files because there was nothing uh, having access to files out there that we saw but i thought that you know we could have at least uh uh, send something in files because maybe like your your file explorers or whatever if you had any file management uh but this thing music and audio so in other words this could be something that could be used in playing music do you use that thing in playing audio the no, that one? is only used for covid and covid vaccinations so if you want to deny oh, an app permission you click on the music app music and audio permission back arogius music and audio access for this app selected allow re- not selected don't allow and radio button select don't allow access to photos and videos also won't be allowed this and app it- doesn't support the latest version of android if this app can't access music and audio files it also won't be allowed to access photos and videos okay so I, it, it makes button. sense to me now austin i think what is happening it, the reason why it got dumped in this area is because it has all the permissions lumped together in the sense that files permission is also merged with uh, music access so if you don't allow it to have access to that music the file permission is equally denied so that's why it is the way it is but at least it should have shown that it also belongs in the file section why it's not there is beyond me imagine if you could like give it access to your music and audio and then when you go for your covid vaccine you could choose what song is playing when they did the injection <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I, i'm afraid of that fee because I, i don't like shots at all i never like shots so uh <laughs> it's better than covid me. though but um <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to think what's what would be an appropriate song for um having a vaccine. <laughs> yeah, or maybe we'll play something to calm you down uh, just in case you're kind of a little bit nervous. Uh so here's a little song to calm you down. Maybe it will do that. Who knows? I've never been to a vaccine place and so I have no clue. Oh, I have. They didn't have any music on. Uh it was very ah. quick actually. Okay. <laughs> All right, Austin, what else do we have? So then we have the Back. confirm button. confirm button. So once you click on this music and audio permission the app will Selected. be denied. Don't allow radio bu- back music and audio. Kalo. Amazing MP3 recorder. So amazing MP3 recorder is a recorder so that should have music and audio permissions so that is allowed allowed amazing cello now cello this is an app for bus pass and all i don't know why it requires uh, music and audio although when you start a trip on this app it plays a sound by which the ticket scanning machine can scan the barcode So that's I'm why, that's why it I, has that's yeah. why it has that. So if you if you turn that off, you're not going to be able to hear that uh, sound. So that makes sense. Envision AI. Envision AI also has uh, permissions for music. I don't know why. Galaxy Watch 4 Manager. Galaxy Wearable. Google Play Store. HDFC Bank. IQ MP3 recorder. I don't know there are some banking apps but I think the reason for this is that the apps are designed for an older version of Android so all the permissions are clumped into this one. Messages accessed in past 24 hours. Messages access my music I don't know what it was doing. ML manager. OneDrive. photos accessed in past 24 hours so this is a clump of all the Back. permissions 
Let's go Privacy back. Privacy dashboard. Music and op- nearby devices used by two apps. Two apps have nearby devices access. And I know the both of them will be Samsung nearby devices. Watch. Back. This is a related. Op- nearby device allowed. Arogya Sedu. No, the government website, the government vaccine app has nearby device uh, access because this app will tell you if someone is infected with COVID, it will see that your device was near that person and it will give you an alert that you need to go and get a test done. Android Auto. Android System Intelligence. Audio Recorder. Bank Exams Today. Bob World. So a lot of uh, apps have access to nearby uh, devices. I don't know why. I think the same rule applies because they are designed for an older version of Android. So in reality, the reason why some of these apps may be here or have this access to nearby also have to do with casting devices. And that's why. So any app that has casting capability will be part of this uh, segment. That's then true. Have- that, that's true. But also, with like Austin said, with the COVID app, it's not casting. It's looking for other Bluetooth devices, I think. Um, and also, what about looking for nearby Wi-Fi devices? Would that be part of it too? So that it can connect De- to them? Definitely. That's part of it too. So, uh, you know, anything that could access Wi-Fi or Bluetooth devices and casting devices, that's why you will see those having that access. If you deny them, you may not be able to pair them to a Bluetooth device or cast audio. Uh, For example, that recorder may also have the ability to record from Bluetooth or may even have casting capability. If you deny that, you are not going to be able to have uh, that privilege. Yeah, and also, um, just as an aside, if you want to um, Chromecast something from Netflix or Prime Video or that type of any, you know, TV app or YouTube, don't do what I did once and wonder for ages why it's not working when you've turned off Wi-Fi. It won't work when you've turned off Wi-Fi, folks. Just you can learn from my silly mistake there. All right, Austin, is that all we have in here? What's that the it last item? 24 hours. Disabled. Then we have the notifications. Nearby the notifications not used in past 24 hours. Disabled. Which are not been used. Phone used by nine apps. Nine have access to my phone. I need to really check these out and see which are they. Photos and videos used by four apps. Four apps have access to my photos and videos. Physical activity not used in past 24 hours. There's disabled. no app using physical activity. SMS used by three apps. Three apps have SMS permissions. Privacy and that's dash- it from the privacy dashboard. So it's really interesting, as you can see the things in here, and some of them have will show you what they have been able to access within the last 24 hours. And of course, you're going to see a lot of, uh, you know, uh, Google or phone or whatever, because these are services that we're using. So it makes sense that you'll see them repeatedly and it tells you what time it is that they pinged your location or whatever. Um, or if you're using WhatsApp, okay, so at so and so a time it was used and all of that. So you, this is an area that one could go in and really customize and yet, in the same breath, be careful not to turn off something that you may need. But I think it's good for people to be able to go in here and look at this area and customize things as they would like to have them customized. It is a little bit different in Samsung. Do you want me to demonstrate that? Yeah, if, if you could. Okay, well, I still have no dashboard. But I do have the permissions thing just in the privacy settings, like Warren said. So I think in Samsung, it shows those first because maybe they're the ones people want to change most. I'm I'm guessing now. I don't work for Samsung, so I don't know. But, um, for example, you might think, oh, is there an app spying on me, you know, with the microphone or the camera? So you might want to um, 
to check that. Permissions used in last 24 hours. Heading. Camera. Zero apps. One microphone. One app. Two of three. Location. Two apps. Three of three. So if I go into location. Permission usage. Now. System UI. System UI. While using app. 1744. One of four. Background. 1705. Background, 1654, 3 of 4. Background, 1652, 1653, 4 and 4. Oh, okay. So that one tells me it was for two minutes then, if it's saying two, to, you know, the two minutes next to each other. View more, out of list. I could view more, but that would just be lots and lots of times when it used my location and we'd be here all day. And it would probably be a great cure for insomnia, but other than that, it's probably a bit boring. Yesterday. Oh, I've missed the other app. Bixby Voice. Bixby Voice. Background, 1809, 1 of 4. Background, 1801, 2 of 4. Background, 1739, 3 of 4. Background, 1733, 4 of 4. And then it's got the system UI that I've just... Yesterday. And then it's items one to four or five. And then it says yesterday and it does the same thing. It gives different times when it's used the location. Um they're just times that are later in the day because it was the end of yesterday. So I won't go through all those. And then in the microphone bit Microphone one app two of three. Permission usage. Navigate use permission settings button. Microphone used by one app. Today, Google, Google, while using app, 1716, while using app, 1533, 2 of 4, while using app, 1406, 3 of 4, while using app, 1328, 4 and 4. I don't know why it sort of thinks the holy grail of numbers to show before it says view more is 4. I'm not sure whether Google's the same or whether that's a Samsung thing, but there we go. And then there is a permission manager that shows you all the permissions you've used in the last 24 hours. Navigate up button. Permission manager. And this is this is more interesting actually because I looked in here before. Body calendar body sensors one of four apps allowed. Calendar seven of 14 apps allowed. Call logs seven of 13 apps allowed. Gosh. Camera 11 of 35 apps allowed. Contacts 13 of 43 apps allowed. Files and media, 22 of 55 apps allowed. Good grief. Location, 11 of 38 apps allowed. Microphone, 13 of 33 apps allowed. Nearby devices, 40 of 51 apps allowed. Phone, 10 of 34 apps allowed. Physical activity, 0 of 5 apps allowed. SMS, 8 of 17 apps allowed. Additional permissions, 5 more. I won't go into that, because, but you can go in like Austin did and deny permissions or allow permissions uh, it's that's all quite similar i think it's just not packaged inside a sub menu called dashboard on my samsung phone as it is on the pixel that's right but basically essentially it's the same thing and again yeah. you know uh, people should go in here because there may be uh, more apps that are actually using this thing that people don't want to so it's always good to go in here and check these things. And if you find an app that actually don't want it having access, go ahead and deny that app having that access. Yeah, lo location is is an interesting one for that. Um, don't forget that in order to, if you want to be able to wake up Google and ask it to phone your local takeaway or or supermarket or chemist or something, don't turn off Google's access to your location because otherwise it won't be able to give you a sensible result for a nearby, you know, if you say phone a chemist and then it will give you a list of them, but it can't do that if you turn off the location. But then there are other apps that you really might think, wait, why are you accessing my location? I don't like that. And they don't actually have a legitimate need for that. And some companies, they're a bit unscrupulous and they like to harvest your data uh, more than you may realize sometimes and things like for example people might want to turn off their location for apps like Facebook uh, and or set it to only 
uh, to ask to use your location if you want to check into somewhere rather than just to use it by default um, so that these apps aren't sort of spying on you. And if you want to turn off the Google location, then if you want to call a chemist, like Fee just said, then you should be able to know where it is at and just say, hey, you know, find um, the chemist located at so-and-so an area or whatever, something like that. You have to uh, know what you are looking for and just telling it exactly what, what you're looking for. You do, but it is, yeah. I'll have to say, it's easier with the location turned on because then yeah. it knows exactly where you are and can tell you how many miles away the chemist is and things like that because it can also give you the address and things like this. And if, you, if you're if you in a new area and you don't know where these things are... Um, It'll be tough that, because you cannot drive there and all of that. So Yeah, but yeah, that can be really sense. useful to know, to, to have that that to help and also if you want to use google maps or lazarillo or basically any um location app don't deny location permission because then it won't work and you might be going this app's no good it doesn't tell me where i am well no because you told it not to so yeah don't do that exactly it's essential and now we turn on to our next segment and we're talking about the app of the week and i'm talking about let's rumble exactly thank you fee and so this week's app of the week is the rumble let's rumble hi everybody this is not the Indy 500, nor the Daytona 500. Rather, I'm demonstrating an app called Rumble, R-U-M-B-L-E. This is like a YouTube or a TikTok or Twitch, or one of those sites where people could stream videos or watch videos. For today's demonstration, I'll be using my Pixel 4 running Android 12 and TalkBack 13.0. I will be utilizing the Google Speech Services for my TTS engine and I am now on my home screen and I have just finished installing Rumble from the Play Store and will now navigate my way to the icon on my home screen and tap on it. Rumble. Here is Rumble. I will tap here to activate Rumble. 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 I am letting Create it a profile, load. upload videos, participate in battles, win cash, and much more. So upon launching it, we hear the following dialogue. Create a profile, upload videos, participate in battles, win cash, and much more. And that's right there in the middle of the phone. And then toward the bottom of the phone, we got two horizontal buttons. Uh, the first one. Login button. And then the second one below that. Create a profile button. Create a profile. Now, I would like to create a profile because I haven't signed up. I have signed up for blind Android users, but now I'll sign up for a personal account. So I'll tap on the last one at the bottom that says create a profile. I'll tap here to activate that. Create a profile. Upon tapping on create a profile, here are the things that we find, and I'm starting from the top. Create a profile, upload videos, participate in battles, win cash, and much more. And below that? Sign up with Facebook, button. Sign up with Facebook. Sign up with Google, button. Sign up with Google. Or. Sign in with Rumble, button. Or. Sign in with Rumble. And frankly, if you have an existing account to sign in with Rumble, there would be no need to tap on creating a profile. Now below the sign in with Rumble, here is all that you need for registration info. We've got username, edit box. Type in your username that you would like to use. Password, password, edit box. Your password. Email, edit box. 
Your email. Checkbox, not checked. There's a checkbox that says checkbox, not checked. You agree to our terms and conditions. And that checkbox is for all that agreement and all that good stuff. Sign up button. And after you've filled in all of that, then you could simply tap on sign up. I think I'm going to make it easy on myself and thus I'll simply tap on sign in with Google. So therefore near the top after the item that says create a, pro create a profile, upload videos, participate in battles, win cash and much more. And then below sign in with Facebook. Sign up with Facebook button. We have sign up with Google button. Sign up with Google. I'll tap here to sign up with Google. Google Play Services. Choose an account. Tapping on Sign Up with Google, we are told to choose an account. I'll tap on my username. Warren Carr, Warcare at Gmail. There's my name or... Add another account. Add another account, which means if you do that, you'll be creating another Google account. So I'll just tap on my name. Warren Carr, Warcare Rumble. Please create a username to complete, out of list. Upon tapping on Sign Up with Google and tapping on my name, we are now on a screen that is asking us to create a username. So you could choose a username, whatever username you want. Username, edit box. Username. And I think I'm just going to type in something silly. Or I could just say, big dog. How about big dog? <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm just going to type in W-A-R-C-A-R-R. -R. W. Whiskey. A. R. Romeo. C. A. A. R. R. So I just type in Walker. Please create a username to complete. Warcare. Edit box. Editing. Username. And below that would be the email address because I chose to sign up with Google. Warcare at gmail.com. And then. Checkbox. Not checked. There's a checkbox. You agree to our terms and conditions. And that agreement. So I'm going to check that checkbox. Not checked. Checked. Now at the bottom, I'm going to tap on. Done. Window Gboard. Checkbox. Checked. Keyboard hidden. Now that I tapped on done. Now below here. You agree. Finish. Button. Is a finish button. I tap here. Rumble. Rumble. And I have finished signing up with Google. Now, putting my finger down. There is no fresh content for you yet. It says there's no fresh content for me as of yet. At the top, though, let's see if we have any buttons near the top. Starting from the top left corner. I have nothing on the top left corner, but then to the top right, I've got Search Holder button. And I think that's the search button. I'm going to tap here to be sure. Video search. Navigate up button. Indeed, that's the search button. So I'm going to tap on Navigate up, found near the top left. Rumble. Search Holder button. So I'm back to that button that says whatever holder, and that's the search. Now, going to the bottom, though, we've got some tabs. From the bottom left, we've got... Tab, selected, one of five, in list, five items. It says Detected, tab, text selected, in. and it says text in, and I think this will be the home, like the main UI. And then to the right of that... Tab, two of five. It says tab, two of five. I'll tap here to see what that does. Selected. I tapped on that, and it appears to me like this is a gaming section. Safemoon underscore Joe, one follower, in list. Button mute, button. And actually it is playing, but I'm not going to play anything on here because I don't want it to, um, you know, get taken down by YouTube or whatever, I have my Do Not Disturb on, and I believe this is the game mode. So it's showing some game, someone playing a live game of some sort. Now I'll go to the third tab. Tab, three of five, in list, five items. 
I'll tap here to see what this tab is. Selected. Tapping on that and putting my finger down. Rumble camera out of list. That is the rumble camera right there. So that is like when I want to capture something with my camera and upload it to Rumble, then I'll tap on that tab to activate the camera. Rumble. Rumble camera. All right, let's move to the fourth item, or oh, that's the fourth tab. Tab, four of five, in list, five items. I'll tab on this to see what it does. Video, zero, selected. It says video zero selected. Tab zero referrals button out of list. In other words, this has to do with videos that I've uploaded onto my account. And right now, because I do not have any videos up here, I am told zero. Let's now move to the last tab, and that would be the fifth tab on the bottom right. Tab five of five in list five items. I'll detected tap here. text W. It says detected text W. I'll tap. Selected. Tapping on that and putting my finger down, I hear. Work here, out of list. So that is more like the settings and things like that. Moving my finger down. Rumbles. It says rumbles. Zero. I have zero rumbles. Followers. Followers. Zero. I don't have no followers. That's sad. I want some followers from you guys. Not. Just follow us on the blind Android users on Rumble. Next. Following. Following. That is who I am following. Zero. And I think I'll follow blind Android users. Image. Subscriptions. And it says image. Subscriptions. And. Image. Settings. And then. There's settings. Let's go down and see what else is here besides settings. Image, referrals. Referrals. Image, earnings. Earnings. Image, notifications. Notifications. Image, sign out. Or sign out. Let's now go ahead and tap on settings. Image, settings, out of list. Let's tap here. Backholder, button. Tapping on settings, we are placed directly on the back, and that is found near the top left. Going down from there, we got... Rumble. Rumble. On. Switch. Checked. It says the rumble is switched on. In other words, if I have any rumbles, I can see them. Turn on all notifications. Turn on all notifications, and to the right of that... Notifications. And checkbox checked. It is checked. Next. When you earn money. When I earn some money. Checkbox checked. I should be shown that money. When your video is live. When my video is live. Checkbox checked. That too is checked. Next. When your video enters the rumble. When it enters that rumble. Checkbox checked. It is also checked. Next. When someone follows you. When someone follows me, checkbox checked. It is checked. And next, when someone tags you, when I am being tagged, checkbox checked. It is checked. When someone comments on your video, and when someone makes a comment, checkbox checked. That too is checked. When someone replies to your comment, and when my response is or my reply has been replied to or responded to, checkbox checked. That too is checked. When someone you follow posts a new video. If I'm following someone and they post a new video. Revenue opportunities. Checkbox checked. And that too is checked. Show my video earnings publicly for a 5% boost in revenue. If I want to do that. Change email. I have change email. Warcare at gmail.com. And that's my email address if I want to change it. Password, password, edit box. I will have to type in my current existing password if I wanted to change my email. Update button. Then I could tap on update or change password. Change password and below that password, new password, edit box. My new password. Password, current password, edit box. Tap in the current password. Update button. Update. 
And that would be the last. And now I'll go back to the previous screen. Rumble. I will now tap on the first tab on the left, at the bottom left. Tab, one of five, in list, five items. Tab there. Selected. So that places me now in the menu UI of Rumble. I'll put my finger down and see if I could find something. Maybe I'll go to the search near the top right corner and search for blind Android users. Search holder, button. Here is the search button. I'll tap here. Video search. Navigate up, button. I'll move my finger down and find the edit field and tap on it. Edit box. I'll tap. Showing English US QWERTY key. Now I'll dictate blind Android users. Voice input. Stop voice typing. Blind Android users. Stop voice typing. Now I'll tap on search at the bottom of my keyboard. Search. Blind Android users, edit box. Keyboard I'll put hidden. my finger down in the middle. Blind Android users podcast. I hear blind Android users podcast. Follow button. To the right of that is the follow. So I'm going to follow that. Following button, one of 50. Now I'm following and it tells me there are 50 episodes. Whatever here for blind Android users. I'll move my finger down. Media thumbnail button. It says media thumbnail button. Blind Android users podcast episode 68. More about the assistant in Realsum. And there it is. I move my finger down and this is an episode about the assistant. If I tab here, I should be able to play it. Video detail activity. Video detail back button. Button out of list. Now it is playing and we can't hear it because I have my phone on do not disturb. Now moving my finger down. Show player controls out of list. There's the show player controls. If I tap. Hide player controls. 0, 012. I 0, hear 13. hide player controls. Now, so the player controls don't stay there for too long. They have disappeared. I'll have to tap again. Show play blind Android users podcast in list. Show player controls out of hide tap. player control. Play now button. Blind Android users podcast in list. I tap on play now. Play now button out of list. Upon tapping on that play now, that control now is staying up. And to the left of that. XO Roo button. Detected. That Text. will be the rewind. I'll move my finger to the right. Play now button. That's the play now. Move my finger to the right again. XO FFWD button. That would be Detected. the forward Text. button. 15. Now if I move my finger up. Hide player controls. Tap. Zero now that it's playing near the top left corner, we've got. Video detail back button. Button. There's the back. Move my finger to the right. 11 rumbles. There are 11 rumbles. Move my finger to the right. Rumble toolbar vote. Button. That is the vote button. Move my finger to the right more. Cast. Disconnected. That is the cast. Report menu button. And then there's a report menu, the last button there on the top right corner. I hope that this gives you a quick overview of the Rumble. And now that you know what Rumble is, join the blind Android users and let's rumble. And that's it about Rumble, folks. And now we move on to the last segment for this episode, and that will be the talkback highlights. We continue now with our journey through the talkback highlights, and today we'll be looking at installment 46. In our last installment, installment 45, we saw the double tapping with four fingers. We'll continue now and look at the third entry, and for today's demonstration, I'll be utilizing my Pixel 4 with Android 12 and TalkBack 
For Speech TTS Engine, I am again utilizing the Google Speech Services. For nostalgia's sake, I'll be drawing a line down and curving to the right to activate the talkback menu instead of tapping with three fingers to do so. So now I'll draw a line down and curve to the right to activate talkback menu. Talkback menu. Actions in list. Here is talkback menu. Next, let's tap on talkback settings. Talkback settings. Here is talkback settings. I'll tap here to activate talkback settings. Talkback settings. Navigate up button out of list. I am now in the talkback settings, and if you happen to be using a phone that will not show most of the content on this screen, then you will need to scroll down the page by putting two fingers in the middle of the phone, then slowly glide those fingers upward, and that scrolls down your page. The item we're looking for here will be the customized gestures. I'll put my finger down and tap on Customize Gestures. Customize gestures in list. Here is customize gestures. I'll tap here to activate this customization page. Customize gestures out of list. We are on the customization page of the gestures, and this is when we switch on our granularity to the heading mode. In other words, if you happen to be in the word, character, or line or paragraph mode, now we need to switch that granularity or that mode to the heading granularity or mode. As I've indicated again and again, we have three different methods of doing this. And my preferred method is that scrubbing up and down with one finger in one fluid movement to change those granularities. But if you prefer, you could swipe down with three fingers or swipe from left to right or right to left with three fingers. I believe though that mine is already set to the headings mode, and so all that we need to do now after you've settled on this heading granularity, then the next thing we wanna do is simply swipe down with one finger and keep doing so until we hear four finger gestures. Here I go. One finger heading in list. One finger heading. Let's keep going. One finger back and forth heading. Next. One finger angle heading. Next. Two fingers heading. We are down to two fingers heading. Next. Three fingers heading. Here is three fingers and the last item here for one more swipe and that should take us to the four finger heading. I will now swipe down to the four finger heading. Four fingers heading. There is our four finger heading. And the last two that we saw are tap with four fingers, practice gestures. And the one we dealt with last week was double tap with four fingers, open tutorial. And now here's the one we will be talking about today, and this is double tap and hold with four fingers, pass through system gesture. Double tap and hold with four fingers, pass through gestures. Now, I do not remember if this is a default or if I had repurposed it to double tapping and holding. But in other words, what we're doing here is passing through a gesture. Now, let's talk about what this means. So, essentially, what this means is that there are times that one may want to activate something and TalkBack may not let you activate it. And so, therefore, we use this pass-through gesture, which would mean that it will send it to the system and allow TalkBack to use it. And now, I will double tap and hold with four fingers so that you will hear what it does, even though I don't have anything at the moment that I would like to use this feature for. Here's what I'm talking about. Now tapping and holding with four fingers. Skip talkback gestures to use system gestures. When you hear a chime, you can use a system gesture that isn't supported by talkback. This is known as a pass-through gesture. And that is what that item is. 
and down below this cancel to the left and OK to the right. And that concludes the four finger tap and hold to pass through the gesture. And with that talkback highlights, folks, we come to the end of this week's episode. We thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next week. And as always, Austin will tell you how to get hold of us. For people to locate us, they can email us with their questions or feedback or comments or recording submissions to contact us at blindandreducers.com. They can browse our website, blindandreducers.com. Check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash blindandreducers. Subscribe to our mailing list, Blind Android users, plus subscribe at groups.io. The links for Telegram and Twitter Clubhouse will be in the show notes with all the other links. So that is it from us this week. From me, it's goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening to another clip from the Blind Android users channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you're notified of every new material that we upload. Thanks again for listening to the Blind Android Users Channel.